So what do you think? What, to you, what was the biggest thing? I was shocked, and not shocked, but a little surprised about how they approached FaceTime and letting it sort of out of the, uh, out of the, out of the Apple garden. Uh, Me to other too. I, it seemed like some cracks in the wall garden there, maybe some windows. Uh, and the news you're talking about is, is allowing people on Android or Windows to join FaceTime calls. And previously, Apple usually locked that down. And the way it works, I was checking it out last night on a beta, is that you can start a FaceTime call if you own an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, and then you get a link up top, and you can then share that with anybody else, and they can join your call. Um, and again, like you're saying, it's sort of like Apple saying, hey, we see all these people using Zoom, maybe Microsoft Teams. Why not keep them using FaceTime? I think it's smart. It sort of brings them into the wall garden a little bit, but also opens it up more. So, okay, so Todd, the, the question I'd ask you is, is it any better than Zoom? I mean, one of, the, one of the challenges Apple always has is they're trying to compete in so many different software uh, areas. And then there are companies like Zoom that are just focused on one single thing. Yeah, I think I, the way I think of them is more of just like a consumer -y kind of fun app that you're using to call your friends and family. As opposed, at least that's how I've used it in the past, right? It's probably how most people use it at home. And then when you're using Zoom, it's like, oh, I need to talk to 25 people across different devices. Maybe it's for work or maybe it's for, you know, a football draft for fun where you need a lot of people and you don't know what devices they're using. And I think that's why this is smart because now you can have somebody host the call and you don't have to go to Zoom. And if they want to take market share from those folks. But in general, I, mean I don't really think of FaceTime as like an enterprise level app. Uh, the way you would zoom. And anything game changing that you saw? Well, the ID thing I thought was really interesting. There were a lot of. If I want to just go back and reflect on what I what I thought about the whole event was that last year it was it was a bigger event, right? That Apple said they're moving away from Intel or M1 chips. We didn't get any huge announcements like that. We got a lot of medium announcements, fun ones across the the board for different operating systems. And I think the wallet one with the ID is really cool. I was talking a little bit about that. Uh, what it'll do is allow you to put your driver's license in your phone where you have your Apple card now or your credit cards. And then when you go to the airport for TSA to start, you can show them your phone. You don't have to take out your wallet and your license. And that's sort of bringing this whole idea that, you know, we're going to get rid of our wallets a little closer to reality. The problem is it has to be rolled out state by state. And Apple hasn't said which states are going to support it first. Uh, so it might take a little time and, you know, if you're taking off in New Jersey and landing in California, what happens if California doesn't support it yet? You still need your wallet. And then police departments, how's that going to work? Um, still need more details on what happens if you get pulled over. You're going to need your wallet, you know, still for your driver's license there. Uh, but also a lot of other big changes to FaceTime just to get back to that, which I think were fun. Uh, there's a shared feature that lets you start a video, whether it's in Hulu or Disney, and then watch it with your friends, which is pretty neat. Um, there's also Todd, a lot of different on, on that? that on that score because I was trying to explain it to Becky before and I, I, <laughs> I probably mis, uh, misconstrued it. I said Netflix. You can't do it with Netflix. Why not? Net and she said to me, why not Netflix? Yeah, good question. I think that comes down to the agreements. E either either it's just that Netflix hasn't built it yet. You know, these are usually it's a developer conference. They have the tools. They give them to developers and then they can build them in. So that's either one thing or. You know, it comes down to these agreements where you see different platforms supporting and not supporting other services. And if Netflix maybe sees Apple as a potential competitor, I don't think a very big one yet with Apple TV Plus, but eventually, you know, maybe they start to not support each other's services. And that sort of thing you see when uh, recently Google and Roku were fighting, for example. And so YouTube TV was pulled off of Roku, things like that. Um, hey, Tom. So it's possible. There's the reason policy. the reason I was kind of wondering is there's so much regulatory scrutiny on Apple right now. I would guess that it was Netflix deciding to not do this yet because if it was Apple saying we're not going to allow a competitor on, you just think that that would draw more eyeballs from Washington at this point. Right, right. I, I would speculate the same thing. That, that's what I would think. I think Apple probably wants as many services as possible on it. Again, because it brings more users while developers might not want to build it yet. They might want to see what's going on, what Apple's strategy is before they, they support these sorts of things. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.